What if the Raimi vs. Symbiote 2 Spider-Man crossed the multiverse to take on a colossal threat? Venom! Who would defeat who? Who's the true strongest symbiote? I, the universe's most hated kaiju power scaler, King Churros, will look over their stats, their feats, to determine the true winner. Before we analyze, I would like to shout out the subscriber who requested this video, Ghost. Round of applause to Ghost. We'll begin with AP and their durability. Starting with Venom. Venom can easily crush cars and crush human skulls, all of which is wall level plus feats. However, Venom easily gets higher than this. Carnage was able to break out of a steel cage that Screech was not able to break out of. Screech had a scream that could shake an entire chapel and break some of it. This can go from small building level up to building level. This easily gets Venom to building level as he was able to throw around and punch Carnage. Now onto New York's national hero, Spider-Man. But not just any Spider-Man, it's Spider-Man when he got the N-word pass and became symbiote suit Spider-Man. But wait, 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 wait. Before he got the N-word pass, he was able to tank William Drip Foe's pumpkin bombs, which can dissolve human beings being calced at small building level. But wait a minute! When Green Gobby crossed over to the MCU, his bombs exploded in Happy's apartments, which were also calculated to be 5.9 tons of TNT, or large building level. And this is all before his symbiote suit. And even still, before he even got his symbiote suit, Spider-Man was able to throw a piece of a wall away while Doc Ock's son was pulling all of the metal, potentially all of New York, into each other. This was calculated to be 71 tons of TNT, or city block level. He can get even stronger than this, however, because he was able to be comparable to Peter One from the MCU, who can scale to Captain America. Captain America was able to keep up a fight with Loki, and Loki is the same Loki who was able to tank the Bifrost explosion, which equates to 117 tons of TNT, or city block level. And this is all before he gets his symbiote suit. His symbiote suit increases his strength and spidey senses, meaning his AP would be even higher than that. Now, I know I rambled a lot, but essentially, let's go over their AP slash durability. This would mean Venom can go from wall level all the way up to building level. And as for Symbiote 2 Spider-Man, he can be from small building level all the way up to city block level. Whichever one you find most applicable to your scaling. How are you coming fast? Venom was able to react to Carnage's projectiles and bullet fire. This should easily put him into the supersonic ranges, so this will apply to his reaction speeds and combat speeds. Tobey Maguire was also able to react to bullets as well in his own trilogy. However, when he crossed over into the MCU, he was able to react to Electro's lightning. So at bare minimum, he should be able to react to lightning, but since Electro is made out of electricity, is a chance that he's possibly reacting to even faster. So at bare minimum, he should be reacting to lightning speed, making him a lightning timer, while Venom is a bullet timer. So Spider-Man, even in the symbiote suit form, would be faster. Now on to the two symbiote's abilities. Venom has natural weaponry, which include his long claws and sharp teeth. He's also able to shapeshift part, parts of his body, creating shields and other forms of metrics. However, he's nowhere near as effective as his rivals are, such as Riot and Carnage but he can still metamorph metamorphosize to an extent. Venom also has the ability to take off the symbiote at any time and place it to another opponent. So since due to him and Eddie's strong connection, he could take the symbiote off of him and just leech it to another opponent. And like the movie states, if the person that's leeched onto it is not strong enough to handle the symbiote, they'll just die. So this can be a win con for Venom. Venom has very high region. In the first film, Eddie was stabbed right in the middle of the chest, but due to Venom, he was able to recover. His legs being bent and arms broken, but he was able to fully recover to 100%. Venom has high region. This would be very helpful in many fights. On the symbiote suit Spider-Man, he doesn't really seem to have any extra abilities that base form Spider-Man doesn't already have. It just seems like it just enhanced all of his regular abilities. So this would include his precog, his webbing, and his enhanced strength. All right, enough with the ramble. Let's talk about who wins. Spider-Man with the inward pass or Venom. Now, looking at their stats when it comes to AP and durability, 
it's pretty clear that Spider-Man has a higher edge in here. Venom has shown no showings of being able to hit City Block, while Spider-Man has. And even if you both class them at building level, Spider-Man gets in a higher range as being at large building level. But if you want to classify them in the same range as, say, small building, you can do that as well. Also, when it comes to speed, Spider-Man is just way, way, way faster than Venom that he's just a blur. So, taking into account that his higher AP, higher durability, and then much faster speeds, he'll pretty much just blitz Venom and just knock him out or knock him dead instantly. And Venom would just have no idea what would happen or be able to do anything about it. So, it's really tough for Venom to get any type of W here. Spider-Man kind of just stops here. However, you can pull some win cons for Venom depending how you scale these two characters. If you don't want to include the MCU scaling and strictly place Toby into his own verse, then he would be supersonic with Venom, so he wouldn't be able to speed blitz him as fast as he did before. If you want to place Venom and Spider-Man into both building level, not large building, but building or small building where there'll be more on an equal playing field and supersonic Reaction and combat speeds for Toby Spider-Man. I do believe Venom will get a high difficulty a win outcome. Venom has fought opponents stronger and larger than him before. This would include Riot and Carnage. They have every reason to defeat Venom, and they pretty much did. But Venom was still able to use his environment or whatever advantages he could to pull off a W. So depending where the fight takes place, he could use this advantage against uh, Toby's symbiote suit. This would include uh, Venom having a multiversal knowledge from being in a hive mind. So he could already likely know the weakness of the other symbiote, which would be sound and fire. Well, it hasn't been directly confirmed if fire is a weakness for the Raimi-verse. Yes, the Venom did die to uh, an explosion, but they, some has argued that it's because of the sound that weakened him to die to said explosion. So there is that argument, and none of the scans ever said he's weak into fire. So there is that. But either way, you'll still be weak to sound, which Venom could likely pull off against Toby Spider-Man. So when it comes to a closer uh, AP and speed thing, I definitely give it to Venom. He's intelligent enough to use the weaknesses against Toby, and then the high region will make it hard for Toby to catch a W. But at the same time, we have seen Venom in the Raimi-verse be able to regen as well. To what extent is it as good as uh, Venom in the Sony-verse? Probably, maybe. It, we didn't get to see too much of it to really classify. So it's safer to say the Sony-verse has better region, which just would mean you have better uh, endurance throughout the fight. And with their AP being similar and speed being similar, I can definitely see Venom catching a W here at high difficulty. But at the same time, I'm not going to slouch on Toby Spider-Man because he's also intelligent. Although he's very enraged and not at his full mental capacity in the symbiote suit, you're still able to figure out Sandman's weakness to water and used it against him. So even here, if symbiote suit Spider-Man was able to figure out that Venom has a weakness to sound, it would likely hurt him in the process. So how effective it would be for him to use sound against Venom too. They were both pretty, pretty much bad trying to use this weakness against each other. So they likely will both try to avoid it, which can give Venom that, uh, that little edge if he wants to. But yeah, it would be a high diff win. I can still definitely see Toby winning even, even in the equal stats kind of thing. But overall, I have to give it to Symbiote Suit Spider-Man because I do include the MCU as canon for him. So he would just be massively, massively faster than Sony's Venom. And he wouldn't be able to even per perceive him pretty much. I mean, I guess you can perceive lightning in that. But there's like not much he can do to stop Symbiote Suit Spider-Man from punching him into the ground. And then if you take the city block scaling or the large building scaling, he's he's just going to get punched right out of his symbiote. And then the sim and Venom wouldn't have time to reconnect with Eddie before Spidey just probably destroys him and then the symbiote right after that. So, yeah, this W will go to symbiote to Spider-Man.